Hello everybody, my name is Brent Johnson and I'm with Heartfield Automation. Last week we talked a little bit about how we create our first ladder logic program and how we declare those variables. This week I'm going to talk a little bit about how we would actually put this program on a physical controller that we have all wired up here and how we actually map each individual variable to specific digital inputs and digital outputs on this controller. So first what we want to do is we need to be in the physical view tab. This is the first part we need to do for mapping variables to different specific outputs and inputs. Next go to your first, let's go to the digital input card right here, double click on it and notice that it opens up IO mapping. You'll see over here that these two sensors each have a white wire. One wire is going to digital input one and one wire is going to digital input four. So as you can see right over here, we're gonna to wanna to map those variables to those digital inputs. So let's go to digital input one Double click in the white space right next to it, then click on the three dots. Then what we want to do is open up program and double click on sensor one. All right, we map sensor one, the sensor one variable to digital input one. Now let's go to digital input four, double click in the white space right next to it, then click on the three dots, then go ahead and click on sensor two. Double click on sensor two. Now we just map that variable to digital input four. Go ahead and save all and then close out of that. Then go to digital output, our digital output card, double click on it. And then you'll, you'll see we're in the mapping view of this as well. Notice our LED is, is wired up to digital output number one. So that's the one that we're gonna wanna define that variable to. So go ahead to the white digital output number one, double click in the white space next to it, click the three dots, and then click the G blue underscore LED. Double click on that. Go ahead and save all. And now we're all complete on that. We just need to build, transfer the project down to the controller. So go ahead and click the red arrow, click transfer. It's gonna build the project down here and then it will transfer it on down to the controller. All right, we're all set. So let's go over here and test out the program and make sure it works. So I'm gonna block sensor one and sensor two. And sure enough, our blue LED turns on. That's exactly what we would expect this program to do. Now let's talk about a few ways that we can monitor this and that can be very useful for both troubleshooting and learning more about how this project is working. So what we wanna do the first way when we're in Automation Studio is go ahead and let's go into monitor mode. Click on that button there and then go ahead and click OK. Notice that the left rung here is highlighted in blue. Then we've got our sensor one and sensor two contacts that are false right now. What happens if we put our hand in front of sensor one? Notice that it turns blue and it starts passing power to the second set of contacts, which is labeled sensor two. If I block that sensor, then that goes true. And then that goes to our output, which is the blue LED and, and we have a blue rung that's lit up or highlighted blue the entire way across. This is a super powerful tool that is included in the Automation Studio software package that is super helpful for troubleshooting purposes. The other way, which I've talked about in other videos, is if we are, don't have Automation Studio, but we still wanna troubleshoot and see what's going on with this controller, we can open up a browser as long as we're hooked up with an ethernet cable from the controller to our PC we can open up a browser and type in the address of this IP, the IP address of this controller, and then look at the system's diagnostic management tool. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and open up a browser, then let's type in the IP address, 192.168.0.10 forward slash SDM. Go ahead and click enter when you get there. Then let's go to hardware, click on the green hardware right here. Then what we want to do is we want to go down to this interface six, IF six, X to X, explode that. Then look, let's look at the first digital input card. So make sure you highlight it so it's highlighted in orange. Then go down here and hit the plus side for IO info. Notice right here we got digital input one, two, three, and four. We have, we're tied into digital input one and four. What happens if we block digital input one? It goes true. And if I block digital input four, that goes true as well. And then we get a working circuit and our blue LED is on. Next, let's go to the X20DO8322. 
and then scroll down a little ways until we find the digital outputs. And remember, we're tied into digital output one. So I'm gonna block sensor one and sensor two. And you can see that digital output one goes true right there on systems diagnostic management tool. This is a super powerful tool for anybody who has any type of machinery in their plant that has BNR automation on it. You can do this without even need, having to go into Automation Studio or getting into the source code. It's super powerful and I highly recommend anyone that's got a piece of BNR equipment in their plant, I recommend that they understand how this works. That's all I have for you this week, guys. Thank you so much for allowing me to show you this video. Next week, we're gonna talk about PowerLink and how we add a third-party PowerLink device to our project. I hope you have a great weekend, and if you like these videos, feel free to hit the subscribe button. There's plenty of great information on other types of automation products that we're talking about on this channel. All right, have a great weekend, and please stay safe.